Guys, we're in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and we're headed to the Basilica of St. Jehoshaphat. We're going to see what it's like in this awesome old church. So this morning, I'm with Jack Ramsey, Disciple Sparrow from Disciple Christian Motorcycle Club's Granite Crew in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And we're going to check out the St. Jehoshaphat Basilica. Come on, man, let's go inside. I'm James Disciple Johnson, and I believe in old school values. I started the world's largest Christian motorcycle club, and I live in the Crown House with my brothers Kink, the filmmaker, and Travis Gascan Gibson. We fast and pray for global revival and start biker churches all across the world, teaching men to have a daily word and prayer time and return to the old school values values of honor, respect, loyalty, chivalry, and love. This is my life, these are my friends, and this is Old School Values. So this is the Basilica of St. Jehoshaphat from 1888 in the Polish south side of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The St. Jehoshaphat Basilica is a magnificent temple of God, erected by Polish immigrants around 1896. Raised to the dignity of a minor basilica in 1929 by Pope Pius XI. It was the third church to be so honored in the United States. Its beauty reflects both the majesty of God and the devotion of its parishioners. I really find the rock formations on the exterior of the building to be very interesting. I'll have to ask about these if I get the chance. And of course, all the modern conveniences of security. The really cool thing I see on the exterior of the Basilica is obviously these beautiful, beautiful windows that are like 20 feet high. I can't wait to see them from the inside. And I think we just heard the bell. In the 1850s, Polish immigrants started settling in Milwaukee. And by 1888, they had set up what became the largest Polish parish in the United States. The Basilica began to be constructed in 1896. Well, y'all, we happened to walk in just as service was starting. I didn't mean to be here for the morning prayers, but I'm glad to take mass with this Catholic church. Let's check it out. And our Savior's need for us to trust and obey his will. So my dear friends, God is asking something of each of us. Faithful gather today. May God give us the courage to enter the wilderness of our own lives so that Jesus may enter our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, may God grant them perpetual rest and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Now I'm going to go right out on a limb before this video goes any further and say there's probably some of you that are freaking out because I've got video of a Catholic church. And you're not Catholic, you're Pentecostal or Baptist or some other denomination of Christians who really doesn't like Catholics. And I used to be like you, so I completely understand that. I grew up a fundamental, independent, judgmental Baptist. And we didn't believe in anything to do with the Catholic Church. And then I had an experience I want to share with you. So one day I was at the Mission San Juan Capistrano in Southern California in the ancient old chapel where they've got a two-story gold altar and it's taller than the room is wide and it just was very strange for my Baptist sentimental mind and I didn't understand why they had it there. It's certainly a tourist trap now where you can pay $6 to tour the chapel but while I was there I saw a nun kneeling and praying in the front up by the altar on the kneeler. And so I thought, I'll go up front and kneel down and pray on the right, at the little kneeler by the altar. Even though I don't necessarily believe with the Catholic Church, I can at least say a prayer to God. And I'll tell you, the moment that I knelt down and began praying to God, the Holy Ghost hit me, bam, like a ton of bricks. I've got tears rolling down my cheeks. I'm sobbing. I'm shocked that God is here. And I even said to him, God, what are you doing here? I didn't expect to find you here. 
and he told me something bewildering. He said, I've been worshipped here 300 years. The thing was that whether I agree with every bit of Catholic theological doctrine or not, there's a lot of godly people who have been worshipping God and the Catholic Church for a long time. And God and his angels are involved in that. Whether or not I agree with every bit of Catholic doctrine doesn't matter. Are these people devout? Do they love God? Do they love their faith? Does every church have 100% of its doctrine correct all the time? No. And the truth of the matter is that many devout people have gone all around the world teaching and preaching in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth from a variety of churches. And God bless them that they do. One of the things that I love about the Catholic Church is the reverent beauty of all that they do to show reverence to God. The waving of the smoke, the little cross they carry when they march down the aisle, even the little robes they wear, the somewhat extravagant uh, inside of the basilica. All of these things are done to point reverence and honor toward God. And that's something I can get down with. More people ought to be giving more of their funds to wonderful organizations that are doing things in the name of God. It's remarkable that some of the oldest buildings you can find in the world are Catholic churches built out of respect for God. So this is the kneeler where you can light a candle and it's believed that your prayer will burn before God. And so I said a prayer right here that he'll keep my children safe and protect them and make himself known to them. So these are the kneelers on the other side and they have a beautiful nativity scene set up. And it looks like that would be the Annunciation of the Angel to Mary right there. Annunciation, uh, where he announces that Mary will have baby Jesus. And this is called the Polish Village. And some of these actual buildings are represented here in the Basilica. Real buildings in Warsaw, Poland, and other places. After Mass, I felt the Holy Spirit leading me to ask the bishop of this Polish church to pray a blessing over my trip to Europe, where I would soon be building Charters of Disciple Christian Motorcycle Club. I didn't know at the time that a week later I would be offered to stay in Poland and I'll actually be in Poland for a week. But this priest blessed me in the name of some Polish saints. And oddly enough, Poland reached out to have me come and stay there for a week. I just don't know what to say. Such a beautiful thing. So we uh, randomly just got to uh, be involved in the morning mass, which was really beautiful, and uh, even be blessed uh, by the priest here, which was really beautiful. And uh, yeah, it was a very moving experience and got to take communion here at the Basilica. Um, really cool. Any thoughts at all? Oh, it's beautiful. It's amazing. <clears throat> just saw everything that's been done here to uh, show reverence for God. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah beautiful a lot of history so very cool on the way out we saw this so oops sorry about that I really like all of the saints they have honored here in the vestibule of the basilica
James Disciple Johnson and I believe in old school values. So after spreading Disciple Christian Motorcycle Club to North and South America, I'm headed to Europe. The Old School Values Tour is coming to learn the history of motorcycle clubs in Europe. That's right, we'll be in Germany, Portugal, Finland, the UK, Italy, and Poland. We'll bring you the sights and sounds of the biker scene in Warsaw, Poland, all the best and interesting foods that bikers in Poland eat, and we'll tell you about the Christian scene all across Europe. Make sure you stay tuned to see the Old School Values Tour, Europe. 2020.